Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 75311, the Imperial Armored Marauder. The set came out in the year 2021, came with 478 pieces, and retailed for $40. So, already, this sounds like a pretty good deal, but today we'll dive into that deeper and find out if it actually is a good deal. Taking a first glance at the set, you can see that it's a pretty nicely sized set for $40. Comes with four minifigures as well, so that's like a minifigure for every $10, which I would say is fair. You can also see there's a nice little side build here. So overall, I'd say at first glance, it looks pretty good. Let's get into the play features. What I was surprised with after buying this set is how many play features they packed into such a relatively small build. Like, it's kind of crazy. There's just so many. Well, I guess we'll start with the front here. We'll work our way from the front to the back because there's just so many. <laughs> Actually, you know what? We're going to start with the side build. I guess this is kind of a play feature. It's just like a little cannon. You can put your minifigures by it. So I guess that's a side build. It's more of just a display thing. But yeah, kind of nice inclusion, but it doesn't add much to the set. But anyway, starting in the front, we do have stud shooters. And I hope you know how these work. You just press right here, and they go shooting off. And then I will keep one stud for the next pair of stud shooters later. But yeah, there are kind of a lot of stud shooters on this set, and I'll get into that later. But anyway, moving on to the front cockpit, you can kind of fold this up and fold this down. Then you have room for a minifigure. And I'll just put a stormtrooper in there. Just kind of stick him in there like that. Then you fold this up, and his head is kind of like right by the control panel. So like that, and then you fold it back down, and you can kind of see him through there. It's kind of cool. I kind of like that inclusion. I think that's pretty accurate. I'm not really sure. I don't remember much from the show, but I think that looks pretty cool from the front. Anyway, I'll just leave this open so we can get a better view at the inside later. And also, moving on to this middle section here, we have this little hat in the top, which doesn't really lead to anywhere. It just has some studs. What this is for is for placing a trooper right here so you can kind of peek out and fire. I think that looks pretty good, even though he can't really go inside the vehicle. I think that's a nice inclusion. I'm not sure if it's actually in the show, but you see another play feature. And it's like super cool because even underneath it, they made like they used all the space because underneath this, there's also like an entrance to the vehicle, which I think is super cool. You can open up on both sides as well. So it opens up over here they can walk inside they can't really like fit through there like they're a little too tall it seems like and also this thing goes down a little bit the hatch so it kind of dips down but you can kind of pretend they're walking out of there which i think is super cool they really didn't waste any space right here anyway that's the mid section so we'll move on to the real seeing section that is right here if you open this hatch on the top inside there are some nice seats they're like tan it's kind of hard to get good lighting on these but there are some seats in there you kind of just cram your minifigures into there, like this. And then they kind of sit there. There's two. There's one in the back as well. So that's kind of nice. It is kind of a tight space. I kind of wish it was bigger, but I understand there's restrictions on how big they could make it because they have to have the wall. But anyway, on the outside of this section, we have these rotating turrets, which have a pretty nice range of, range of fire. And they swivel pretty well. It's just one problem I've had with them is like... I don't know, while moving the vehicle, sometimes they just come out and they kind of get in the way. And they kind of have this, like, they don't move very fluidly. I don't know. It's it's nice, but I don't know if this piece was the best for it. I feel like there would have been a better piece for that. I don't really know what, but they don't have the best fluid movement. Anyway, back behind this, we have some storage crates. So it kind of, like, juts out like this to make room for all that. And I've heard there's been many different opinions about, like, does this, like, sacrifice the look of the build? Like, having this weird slant out thing. I don't really mind it that much. I mean, usually Imperial stuff is kind of like clean and this makes it less clean, but I don't know. It's nice because it does add a play feature and that is the crates in the side and you just open these up and it's kind of hard to get them out, but yeah, come on. There you go. It's just like an Imperial crate, nice printed piece. I think this is the piece they use for the gonk droids, but yeah, there's nothing really in it. But it's a nice inclusion. You can put, like, a blaster in it if you wanted. And then you just slide it back in. And the same goes for the other side. There's the exact same thing. Nothing in the crate. But that's a nice inclusion. And then, finally, going to the very back. Yes, there's a lot of play features on the set. We have the back stud shooters, which has a nice range of motion as well. I really like this design. It's super cool. And then you just fire it like that, just like the ones in the front. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. But the really great thing about this is if you pull this down there's room for a trooper to sit like this put him in this chair there's this clear piece that rotates that connects so 
when you move the trooper, here I'll move him down here, it also moves the guns, which I think is super cool. You can fold it up and you can kind of see his face in there moving. And I just think that's super cool, really well executed. And overall, I feel like the play features on the set are really great. They really did not waste any space. Moving on to stickers and prints. There's no stickers in the set. Hooray! I cannot tell you how excited I was when I opened the box and there was no sticker sheet. Just the best feeling of all time. But there are a few prints and they don't really add anything to the set. Like I showed before, there are these crates in here and those have prints on them. They're like the Gonk Droid body piece. I think they are, I think that's what they use. And they have some of that Star Wars writing on it and they have the Imperial logo, which is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice piece, not exclusive or anything. And then the other printed piece on the set is a control panel in the front. When you unfold this, there's this regular control panel. I think it's one of the normal ones they use. I don't think it's exclusive, but yeah, it's nice. They gave us some printed pieces and I'm really glad there are no stickers because I feel like the set doesn't really need them. And so yeah, good job, Lego. All right, time to talk about accuracy. So I don't really know. I'm not I'm not the biggest Mandalorian fan. I mean, I watched the show, but I don't remember much about it. I know this was like a one scene where they were like chasing through like a valley and a mountain or something. And based on the pictures, I can kind of see that it seems a little more dark gray than they have it in this set. Like, I feel like the top was more dark gray and it might've been a little slimmer, but remember I talked about how that's just a matter of opinion. So overall, I think it's pretty accurate. Maybe the minifigures aren't the most accurate. They seem just kind of random, but... Overall, the build is pretty accurate. Something else I wanted to point out about the design in the set is something I kind of noticed after recording a little while, and that is I actually really like just these, like, the gaps in between the, the like, where the windows are supposed to go. I don't know. I just, I really like that. I like how you can kind of see in through the sides. They have that on the back as well. Like, that just looks super cool. I don't know why I like that so much. I just think it looks amazing. There's not a lot of sets that, like, have that and I think this one does it extremely well. It's minifigure time. So starting off with minifigures we have Grief Karga here and he is exclusive to the set. I'm not sure if this is his first appearance. I think it might be and he looks pretty good. He has a nice face printing and he has some nice torso and leg printing. I really like the leg printing kind of continues the torso printing. And then on the back it's pretty detailed as well. Actually no he's not. He really isn't. He just has a few lines on the back. And I think he does not have a second pace face because of his beard. Yeah, he doesn't. And that's understandable. But I think he looks really good. Moving on to the two Stormtroopers included in this set. They are the newer style of Stormtroopers. And I know a lot of people have a problem with that style. Like how the head can't really move and it's kind of stuck in this straightforward position. But I think they look really detailed. That's something I like about the newer version. They have some nice torso and leg printing and some nice back printing looks pretty detailed and good and I like the helmet mold I don't know maybe not the front part like that looks a little smushy faced but the helmet mold design is really cool and speaking of the helmets underneath them if I can get them off these are actually really kind of difficult to pull off there we go we have some nice new faces so it's like it looks like we have a female stormtrooper over here and then an african-american stormtrooper over here which I think is super cool it's nice that they have some different colored faces instead of just the normal angry face. I think that's super cool. I really like how they're doing this with their stormtroopers. Finally, the minifigure you probably all were waiting for is the artillery trooper. I think he looks really nice. He has this nice side gun build, which I already looked at before, so I'll take that away. But anyway, he has this nice yellow design and he has that shoulder cape thing, which is amazing. I know recently Lego's been not producing as many cloth pieces and having one again is super awesome. It looks really good. And he has some nice leg printing. I really like the yellow color scheme. He does have the kind of not turny head, but I guess it's okay. It is really detailed. It has the nice yellow stripe. And underneath, no, I didn't even know he had a different face than all the normal ones. He has like a little bit of a different face. It kind of reminds me of the like 2008 clone faces or when they were first making the Clone Wars faces, the clone head faces, but I don't know. It's nice that it's different. And then he also has a nice backpack, which has some like white lightsaber hilts. Looks pretty nice. And I guess we'll take a look at his back printing as well. This might take a little bit to get out, but that's actually kind of cool. It actually, his back printing is pretty detailed, even though you don't get to see it. So great job, Lego. Really nice and detailed minifigure. Now time to talk price per piece. So when the Saint set came out in the year 2021, 
It retailed for $40 and came with 478 pieces. So that's an average of about like nine or eight cents a piece, which is a lot better than 10 cents per piece. So already this is a really good deal. And I also feel like this isn't really price per piece, but just how many play features are in this set, regardless of the piece count and just how much space is in it, just makes it even more worth it. And the minifigures are exclusive as well. So I feel like the price per piece already is good, but you also get great value for the set. So I think the price per piece is definitely worth it. And it's probably one of the better ones I've ever reviewed in terms of value. All right, so what is my final opinion? I guess I'm gonna have to give it two ratings and then I'll average it out at the end. So I'd say for like a kid or like for someone who's into the play features in their Lego set, I would give this a 10 out of 10. The set is amazing for that. It has some great play features. Like it's just jam packed with interior space. The minifigures are pretty good. You can have some nice battles. Although there's one problem with the minifigures. I kind of feel like they could have used like maybe Cara Dune or the Mandalorian or like that blue guy. I don't know. Was he in that scene? I'm not sure. One of like another Mandalorian character. I feel like there might be, I guess it makes sense for there to be so many stormtroopers because it is a stormtrooper transport, but I feel like it would have been nice to have one more minifigure. And then the second ranking or rating, I would give it a eight out of 10 for maybe like the displayer. Cause like, I feel like the set looks a little weird with like the bulkiness on the sides and the stud shooters. I mean, you can take them out, but still it's kind of weird how it looks like that. And also, I feel like the minifigures, like I said before, they might not be the greatest, although they are really exclusive, so that kind of bumps it up a little bit. So I feel like if you were just a displayer or a collector, this would be an 8 out of 10. But if you were buying it for like a kid or someone who really likes to play with their Lego sets, it's probably a 10 out of 10. So 9 out of 10 set overall. So there you have it, guys. That's my review of set number 75311, the Imperial Armored Marauder. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.